Just because someone graduates from law school and puts out a shingle advertising his legal services does not mean that he can think straight. As I've mentioned uh, many times on this show, I get quite a few uh, emails uh, on a daily basis, and I'm thankful for them. There are a lot of good, very good emails that prompt me to think in certain areas and uh, tip me off uh, to some topic or to some article somewhere. Uh, so I, I, I like the interchange, but sometimes I get some from uh, emails from people who just are uh, just go over the top and show their irrash irrationality, and some of them are from people who are fairly intelligent, and if they took their type of argumentation that they give me in their email to, say, the courtroom, in this case, a, a lawyer who's emailed me a few times, he'd be thrown out of, thrown out of court. He, objections would be coming uh, left and right. And here's what, uh, here's what he, he wrote me. We had offered a book called The Age of Revelation by uh, um, Elias Boudno. Boudinot was a um, uh, founding founding father was uh, you know was a state representative. He was in, involved in the establishment of the the, the mint. Uh, was involved uh, in uh, some aspects of the the Bill of Rights, um, and and of course he's not the only one. We published his his particular book to give some balance to the idea of Thomas Paine's uh, the Age of Reason. It was in fact a direct response to the Age of Reason. So you have to keep in mind that this was a, an advertising a piece to promote a particular book to say that there are uh, lots of founding fathers. And, and anyway, here's was, here was the response from this lawyer. He says, are you guys stupid or do you become purposely oblivious to the facts? Uh, how come the one person you do not mention in your diatribe is the father of the U.S. Constitution, James Madison, who was the recorder of the minutes of the Constitutional Convention, wrote the vast majority of it, wrote the Bill of Rights, wrote the First Amendment, modeled after the Virginia Bill of Rights, and was the staunchest supporter of religious freedom without interference by government. Do you think he had at least a little bit more influence than Elias Boudinot in the way the role of religion in this country and individual freedom of worship became enshrined in the Constitution and society? And I'm thinking, what world is this fellow uh, a, a part of? Uh, we, were, we were simply promoting a book uh, showing that there was an answer back in the 18th, uh, late 18th century, early 19th century on Thomas Paine's um, Age of Reason and to demonstrate that the secularists hardly ever mentioned Boudinot's book, even though it was a prominent book in, in his own day. Uh, yes, we're very familiar with James Madison. Uh, we've uh, published, uh, I've written quite a bit on James Madison. We've published a number of, of books uh, both praising and critical of, of James Madison. But let's, let's get a few things straight here about the Constitution. Yes, James Madison uh, took notes. In fact, if you go online, you'll note that these, uh, these notes are about the, the, the debates surrounding the Constitution of the United States. It's not like James Madison came in here and said, here, guys, here's the Constitution. Why don't you just you know, put your name to it? There were committees involved in drafting the Constitution. And the Virginia Bill of Rights, yes, was used, and we'll get, we'll get to that in a moment on, on Article 16, dealing with religion. But there were 55 individuals who participated in the drafting of the Constitution of the United States. And if you read Madison's notes, uh, you will see that there's a great deal of debate going into all of this. Yes, Madison was, was, was called the, the father of the Constitution. It was something that he did not want in his, in his own right. In fact, the, the notes to the Constitution uh, didn't come out until very late into, into the, um, uh, the, the 19th century. They were not published in Madison's, in Madison's day. Um, and so when you, when you go back and you look at this particular period, uh, it was James, it was Madison who really did not want a Bill of Rights. He said it wasn't necessary. You had two groups of, two groups of individuals. You had the Federalists on one side and the Anti-Federalists on the other side. And when the Constitution was drafted, the Federalists, uh, the Federalists had, to, had to defend this Constitution because what they were doing was centralizing political power. The, the states were having to give up a certain amount of their sovereignty and turning it over to a national entity. 
And everybody was fearful of this. Even the Federalists, to a certain degree, were, were very fearful of this. And so when the Constitution was drafted in 1787 and sent to the states, the, 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 the states balked at, uh, at, a, at a number of the provisions in there because they didn't feel it stopped the federal government enough. And, uh, and you had uh, people like uh, James Madison and, and, and John Jay and others who said that we did, they did not need a Bill of Rights, and, and for very good reason, uh, because the, the, the nature of the Constitution was it was a document of enumerated powers. And so if the Constitution didn't say anything about uh, uh, the freedom of the press or freedom of religion, uh, freedom of assembly, uh, and, and et, et cetera, uh, the, the Second Amendment, um, uh, Fifth Amendment, all the things that we, we, we constitute today as, 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 uh, as liberties and freedoms, if the Constitution didn't mention those things, Madison and Jay and others said, well, then the federal government doesn't have those powers. Uh, so it was the Anti-Federalists who said, look, we're we want further provisions in the Constitution. We want a Bill of Rights. Uh, and, and a Bill of Rights wasn't something uh, uncommon. It was, in fact, Virginia, some of the other states, in, in fact, had their own Bill of Rights. So it was Madison who really didn't, didn't think it was necessary. It was the individual states, many of them said, we want a Bill of Rights. Um, and here's what uh, John Jay, one of the authors of the Federalist Papers, and who was also the first the Chief Justice of the United States, uh, stated, he stated this, silence and blank paper neither grant nor take away anything. Uh, complaints are also made that the proposed Constitution is not a, accompanied by a Bill of Rights, and yet they who make the complaints know and are content that no Bill of Rights accompanying the Constitution of this state, that is New York. So Jay was simply making the point, since the Constitution is silent on these particular topics, the federal government does not have those powers. But again, the anti-federalists said, we want further provisions. And one of those provisions was related to religion. Uh, and this lawyer who, who emailed said uh, that uh, this was based upon the Virginia uh, Declaration of Rights. But let me read Article 16 of the Virginia Declaration of Rights. That religion or, that, or the duty which we owe to our Creator. And it's, uh, consider this. This is not an atheistic provision. It's that we, uh, there is a duty we owe to our Creator. And the manner of discharging it can be directed by reason and conviction, not by force or violence. Who's, who's disagreeing with that? Certainly none of the founders would have, and I certainly don't disagree with it. And therefore, all men are equally entitled to the free exercise of religion, according to the dictates of conscience, and that it is the mutual duty of all to practice Christian forbearance, love, and charity towards each other. See, even this particular provision in the, Declar in, in the Virginia Declaration of Rights acknowledges that this is, this is accomplished within a, in a Christian context. And so, what does the First Amendment actually state? What was the purpose of the First Amendment? The purpose of the First Amendment was to keep the federal government out of religious issues uh, as they pertain to the state. That's why it states very clearly, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. This was a prohibition against Congress, to keep Congress out of what the states were doing regarding religion. Uh, now, this, the First Amendment has been turned on its head. Uh, it's, it's, it has become a, this, a separation between church and state. It has become a separation between God and religion. And this goes on and on and on. Uh, yes, Madison had a great deal to say about the, the Constitution, but so did so many others. Now, that's why there are debates regarding the Constitution. There were 55 members uh, in attendance. Uh, the Bill of Rights was added later on at the insistence of the states, uh, not at the ins uh, insistence of some of the some of the delegates who believed that it was unnecessary. So, when you come across lawyers who have gone to law school and uh, who, who hang out a shingle, uh, keep in mind that they are not up on these issues any more than many Americans are. Go back to the original sources and look to see what they have to say before you make declarations on what we know here at uh, American Vision on these particular topics. For more related to today's topic, check out America's Christian History, The Untold Story. You will find it at AmericanVision.com.